Welcome back to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is Moffat Kuto, who is the Executive Director of the Regional Multicultural Youth Council. So, Moffat, we were just talking about, in a way, youth going back into their neighborhoods and starting to organize and, and, and put on and uh, facilitate more programs for other young people really broadening the circle, reaching out to more people. How has that impacted the organization? How, how's that working so far? I think it's, there are challenges, of course, because you need resources to make things work. But I think it also opened our eyes to the diversity in the community, but also to the different levels of uh, struggles some people have. Like when I was mentioning working at the youth center, we had many young people who were already role models with families that would drive them and support them. And uh, th those were not issues for them. They really wanted to do the best they could. But once we started reaching into the neighborhoods, you see a whole different level that many were low income families struggling to make, make ends meet. And some could not even afford bus fare to send the kids to meetings because it meant um, do you buy milk for the rest of the kids or you just send one kid to a meeting when they didn't know what would they benefit from that meeting but now when we're doing local activities we started realizing that training some of these young people to organize their own activities was so helpful in that rather than young people we say get bored that's a natural trend and if nothing is organized like they say idle hands are the devil's playground yes. it seems as if they always get into trouble whereas i think i will like when we were working in um, windsor for example you could now find all these kids coming to clean up the neighborhood picking garbage organizing something like a little floor hockey so you realize they have potential Mm -hmm. And they really want just something better. But if no one is there to connect with them and provide those supports, you end up now having more problems than solutions. And I think it giving us an example at that time, the Windsor had a neighborhood police station right there. We really built so many bridges that we could even now go camping with the police officers and some of the young people to... Um, sleeping giant things that probably many people could say young people in the police going to camp out there and uh, what would they be talking with the police but it was really a new way of looking at things and sometimes we look back because our groups were really affected a lot um, with the casino opening we used to make a lot of funding fundraising through bingos when we lost that uh, revenue we never really fully recovered to do the programs. And this is one, sometimes you can say it's a little silver lining. A lot of the First Nations who had seen our work through those little necessary rhymes singing reached us and said, well, we have a lot of students coming to your community. And the Dennis Cromartie High School there, could you come and really help them to do that? Then I, uh, many of us know with the tragedies that have happened there, students who have died. And we have been there working with the First Nations on how do you make these young people focus on what they came to do in the city? And how do you make them feel accepted, wanted, appreciated? Because when sometimes there's this exclusion or racism that makes you not want to go to some of those places, you end up hanging with the same bodies, doing the same things. And it's very hard to intervene and help when there's nothing positive happening. So that's how we started the after school program at Dennis Cromartie High School. So this is a partnership between the, the Youth Council and First Nations. And, and First Nations. Yes, and I think, uh, like I said, I'm already putting a Dennis Franklin Cromartie jacket with me here. We have started, like, this is for Broomball, even though I don't play Broomball, but I support them to do something. They like just being there to say, we want to support you to do better, really means a lot. And um, many of us know what the Truth and Reconciliation Commission recommended that the gap given residential schools and those 60s schools when families were broken down. And I don't think most of us really appreciate 
the damage that had been done to families when you can't speak your language, you can't practice your culture. Really, you lose your identity. And that's one of the challenges we have been saying. Let's work together to make these young people proud again of who they are. And we are proud to say, I think we just had a graduation at Dennis Cromarty last Wednesday, um, May 17th, and 32 students graduated. Last year it was another 30, which is almost a record in the uh, for the high school, because before there were only a handful of students graduating because there was really no this welcoming environment. Like some kids uh, were telling me that, you know, Moffat, I really like you coming to us. Then we realize not everyone is racist in the city. There are people who are reaching us and they want us to also succeed. But sometimes when I go to the supermarket, someone I don't even know, I haven't done anything to them, they tell me to go back to where I came from. And I thought Canada is all my country, but why would they say that I haven't done anything bad to them? I don't even know them, but they can have the confidence to come and swear something at me. And that's what sometimes we see. And that's why many of us might not feel like staying in the city. We drop out of school. But then we try to tell them that, well, dropping out of school is not the answer here. Because Canada is changing. You need an education to really get any of those good jobs, to get out of poverty and the cycles of mm, misery most of you guys might experience. It's education. In fact, it's one of those things that you now put on another head because I also work with Corrections Canada. I'm the chair of the committee here in Thunder Bay. I don't think many people realize that the jails are full of school dropouts. Statistics say kind mm -hmm. of uh, say that 80% of young offenders in the jail have all dropped out of high school. 60% of them don't even have grade 8 education. So if you are now looking at it for that way, you still realize education is the only thing that's going to make a difference. Otherwise, these young people are going to be resigned to a life of crime. And it makes no difference that are you native, are you black, are you Chinese, or are you white. If you drop out of school, that's where you're going to end up because that's the fact we know jails are full of those dropouts. But then if native people or blacks or whatever race is overrepresented in the dropouts, that's what you're going to go see in the system. Yeah. And that's what you see in the courthouses. Now you generate this whole idea that they are criminals. <laughs> like I said, sometimes you kind of chuckle when we compare ourselves with what's happening in the States, that Mexicans are all this and that. It's those stereotypes when people don't have opportunities to do well and succeed um, to access education, you end up having with that structure where you don't even feel safe in your own neighborhood. Moffat, you're inspiring. I, I wanted to talk about more of the wonderful things you do, but we're out of time. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I sure appreciate it. Please join us again next week and stay safe until then.